In this video, we will see how to configure and install the Endless Modbus Master Transmitter. As a reminder, the TX Modbus Master allows you to read or write on 60 Modbus registers, distributed among a maximum of 10 slaves. The Modbus Transmitter is used in proprietary low RAW mode. This means it communicates via radio with an Endless Modbus receiver. Let's get started. The first step is to connect your Modbus TX to your slaves. The connection is made via RS485 using the communication cable provided with the Modbus Master Transmitter. Also, don't forget to screw the antenna delivered with the product onto the antenna connector. Once your Modbus TX is properly connected to the slaves you want to read, you can move on to the next step. The entire configuration will be done from the embedded server in the receiver that the Modbus Master Transmitter will communicate with. To access the receiver's server, you need to power the receiver between 7.5 and 24 volts DC, and then connect it to your PC via Ethernet. Also, make sure to connect a long-range antenna to your receiver. We can now move on to the product configuration phase. Once your receiver is powered and connected to your PC, we will configure the Ethernet settings of the PC to access the configuration server. The Ethernet settings configured in this example correspond to the Ethernet settings that allow access to the server with its default IP address. The default address of the receiver is 192.168.77.77. From your browser, you will access the receiver's server. From the Advanced Settings of the RX Config tab, we will modify the default address of the receiver's server to an address that suits us better. Don't forget to save the changes and restart the receiver by clicking on Reboot to allow the receiver to accept the new address. We will then modify the Ethernet settings to match the new IP address we have just configured. Please remember to systematically adapt your Ethernet settings whenever you change the IP address. We can now access the receiver's server with the new address we configured. 192.168.1.79 We can now declare our Modbus master transmitter that will be paired with the receiver. From the Add Sensor button in the TX Config tab, enter the parameters of the Modbus TX, its location, its low raw ID, and its periodicity. In the Advanced options, you can specify the slave number to read, its Modbus ID, and the communication parameters between the TX Modbus and the slave, such as baud rate, parity, stop bits, and data bits. We now proceed to the configuration of the registers. Each register is defined with its register number, size, 16 or 32 bits, and type, input, hold, or coil. Once we have configured the first slave and clicked on Save Changes, it will appear as a classic transmitter on the Config TX page. We can now configure a second slave by clicking on Edit. We need to choose a different slave number and Modbus ID. The configuration of the registers is done in the same way as when we configured the first slave. For your information, it is possible to duplicate a slave to read more than six registers by choosing a different slave number and keeping the same Modbus ID. This configuration can also be applied to as many slaves as desired to read up to 60 registers. Once the second slave is configured, we click on the Save Changes button. Just like the first slave, it will appear as a classic transmitter on the TX config page. The activation of the TX Modbus slaves is done by powering it between 7.5 and 24 volts DC, just like the receiver's power supply. In the TX config tab, refresh your browser page. A green validation badge should appear in front of the TX Modbus slaves that you have just activated. 
In the Network tab, the frames containing the content of the registers of the slaves read by the TX Modbus you have just powered should be received at the configured periodicity. This tab allows you to validate the proper reception of the TX Modbus frames and to validate that the RSSI levels for receiving the frames are good. Click on the Modbus tab. When you select a slave on the left side of the screen, the registers information are displayed in the Modbus table. As shown in this example, we can see the values of the registers of the first slave. If we select the second slave, its Modbus table is also displayed. We will now access the server of the TX Modbus. The power supply, the configuration of the Ethernet settings, as well as the change of the IP address are done in the same way as for the receiver. The IP address of the TX Modbus server in this example is 192.168.1.78. The Slave Status tab will show you the data read by the TX Modbus on the slaves. You can confirm the same data and register values as in the Modbus table of the receiver. The Slave Setup tab will show you the configuration parameters of each slave in accordance with the configuration made on the receiver side, including communication parameters such as baud rate, parity, stop bit, and data bits. We will now show you how to write to the registers of the TX Modbus slaves. Let's go back to the Modbus table. In this example, we will write to registers 12 and 18 of the Modbus table, corresponding to registers 2 and 5 of the hold type of the first slave. For your information, writing can only be done on hold or coil type registers. To write to these registers, we will use Modbus Pole Simulator. By clicking on Connect, we can connect the receiver via TCP IP. To read the Modbus table, you need to enter the Modbus ID of the receiver and the address from which we read the registers. These two parameters are available on the General tab of the receiver's Config RX page. Now, the Modbus table is being read from Modbus Poll Simulator. To write to the two registers mentioned earlier, we will use the Write Single Register function. The ID is that of the receiver, and the address corresponds to the register address we want to write to, by entering the value and clicking on send. The OK response message confirms that the command to write to register 12 has been successfully sent. We then write to register 18 in the same way by entering the value of interest. For your information, the feedback delay after writing to a slave register depends on the periodicity with which we have configured the TX Modbus. We can see that the registers are updated with the new values after sending the periodic message. In the Modbus table, we can see that the value of register 12 is now 100 instead of 200, and the value of register 18 is 250 instead of 500. In the Slave Status tab of the TX Modbus server, we can also confirm the same data and register values as in the Modbus table of the receiver. Congratulations! You have successfully completed your first installation of the Modbus transmitter. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to contact our sales team for more information about the Modbus Master Transmitter. We would be happy to tell you more about the possibilities offered by this product. Bye.